All right, this is a this is a final video here, or last video of the construction video since it's been done now for a few weeks. Got the dome back in October and took about I don't know what it was three or four weeks to get everything in order. So we're going to take a look at all of the insides and everything that's been done here. So first up is the external view. Uh, you can see I, I keep a rag here so that whenever I go to open the dome and there's water in that slot from the inside, I swish it away and it collects in the slot all the way around. Uh, the, the bottom edge, I use some PL Max. That stuff dries like concrete. Worked very well. No water has gotten through on this deck so far. This deck is 12 by 12. And I had to put a, a flange um, a lid here above the door so the water doesn't leak down in through the top and seem to come through the smallest of cracks. I need to find a better material than that, but it, it works for now. Come around the back side here. And uh, there's the bays. Now I sent the wire for the Cloud Watcher, AAG Cloud Watcher, up through here. I still need to. Um, strap that down a little better but it's all right for now and that was my sort of temporary setup with one, uh, two screws in the front this is the AAG cloud watcher setup and it looks towards the southwest corner of the sky as you can see I'm blocked by these two trees but it seems to be working okay so far uh, I've angled it up to the sky like you're supposed to get a better look at it here from this angle that kind of a view and so far it's done its job so now we'll go on the inside check everything out on the inside here's just a quick clip from the outside it might be a little easier to see the inside from this perspective gives you an idea of the space that you really have inside here can be a challenge. I chose to park the uh, uh, chose to put the counterweight on the uh, the bay on the north side. Better to be behind the counterweight than anywhere near the optics. Works out pretty well. I had some trouble with this motor and the track at first. Uh, problems with this. This uh, there's a small pin here, and it was coming out. And it turned out that the screw. I thought I lost the screw that holds it in place there, but you just had to tighten it and it was okay. And you had to make sure the spacing was right. The spacing is good now. And the track isn't being eaten up from the, the screw here like it was originally getting all over the floor. Uh, and the charger, I mounted it and it's pretty tight here. Uh, this, uh, I've moved all the wires to the bottom so they're not in the way. At one point, this actually uh, the track came loose and it hit into this because it's so close. But I've since fixed all the track and I put small screws in the track here. There's a small screw here. There's one every few feet. Plus, I put some uh, use some epoxy glue behind there too to keep it in place. I wasn't taking any chances with automation on this. So now we can take a look. Uh, we're passing by here. Here's the Edge 11 telescope right now configured for. Or hyperstar uh, hyperstar is up here in the, in the front there and it's on this uh, CM120 mount which is sitting on top of the PVC pipe which is 10 inch with concrete down through the deck floor and there's space down in between so no vibrations affect it and this is that rubber flooring which it's a little tricky getting keeping clean in the winter especially and it's uh, extremely waterproof. If you get a puddle on the floor here, it will not disappear very quickly at all. It certainly won't go down through. I did put this foam around the sides to try to insulate things because I was having humidity issues. Uh, mainly, I think you need it in the bays, ideally, because these wheels here leak down through and drip, I found, at least in the summertime. And now that doesn't happen at all. And I'm using a small 1,500 foot square foot Dehumidifier, I tried the larger one, 4,000 square foot, made no difference. So, small one it is. There's a heater there and a fan from the summer. 
and you can see some of the outlets I've got going on down there and the screen and the area here for doing things and the drawer system where I keep all the equipment inside here now, some optical lenses in this drawer and then got some of the, uh, len uh, the uh, filters and cameras in here uh, planetary camera down there one other mention that I did put a uh, 18 inch uh, golden rod heater rod in here about 10 watts it keeps the drawers uh, humidity down pretty low 55% or less that works out well here's a look at the um, power panel I put in and the and the rig runner which powers the DC which powers the scope two ports on the scope just for that and then that's a data logger there uh, web control unit I can control the ports on there and turn them on and off so just the heat and lights which at this point I only have going around half the dome on the floor don't really use them that often and uh, so now we'll, we'll just open this guy up it was a real struggle at first things weren't working right I added the double sided uh, slippery tape to the outside which helped a little bit and readjusted things, fixed the motor positioning and then it did its job and now it works every time. One problem I am finding is that the uh, park position doesn't always hit the two contacts. It seems that I have to go home first and then hit the park position. That might be a uh, diameter or radius setting that's off in the software. And there we go. She's up and ready for action. But that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Got a, uh, everything works here. Oh, I have a camera here too to be able to watch things from the office room from the inside, which is where on cold nights especially I can remotely control everything once the camera that I'm using for that night is in place. I should also mention I have these hooks here which came with the retention kit, at least these hooks did. Uh, they didn't line up and I didn't have the wheel, I didn't want to lift it up to put connect them to the wheel to attach to the wheel and they weren't in the right spots. So I'm using a bungee cord to connect them for high wind situations. And most people say even at 50 mile an hour winds, this isn't going anywhere. But if I hear that the winds are gonna be 50, I will connect the bungee cord there. And there's a, another hook there, which goes down to, down to here, just as a extra precaution, but probably really isn't needed at all. And that's it. That's the uh, next dome. And uh, clear skies.